This was the first permanent insect zoo in the country. We opened in 1976. We have over 70 species of, of insects in the insect zoo and well over uh, 100 species of butterflies in the pavilion that we take care of. So we have to know what all the animals eat and what they need to survive and do well and then be able to share that information with the public. Every day we have an interactive portion with the visitors. You can hold an insect, you can ask questions, and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. This is a Madagascar hissing cockroach, and they're famous, as per the name, because they hiss. If they feel threatened, they will let out a hissing noise. Mm -hmm. So that's to trick predators into think. So they'll trick predators into thinking that they're a larger animal. We have here a pair of uh, female eastern lubber grasshoppers. A uh, common question I get asked is why they don't hop away from my hand. And that's actually because uh, it's a natural habit for them not to hop. Also, their wings are too small and underdeveloped for them to fly under their own weight, so they don't fly. One of the reasons here that we have these animals specifically on this cart is they're uh, relatively harmless in comparison to uh, some of the other animals and insects that we have in the zoo. So uh, when, we're trying to start, when we're trying to reach our goal of communicating science to the public, one of the best ways is obviously is hands-on experience. We have hundreds of butterflies, probably close to 400, flying around, and they're butterflies from all over the world. So you can see huge moths that are this big um, to monarchs that you'll see in your backyard. Butterflies have a really long proboscis that reaches in and can get nectar from a flower, and then it's during that time it's picking up pollen, then it helps pollinate other flowers. And so we're looking at that relationship between butterflies and plants in that exhibit. And what that means, how over millions of years, how plants and butterflies have evolved or changed in order to suit each other and help each other out. Get out and explore. So get out in the woods, go in your backyard, go in your garden, and just watch. It's using an observation skill. So it's looking at plants and seeing what might be eating them. You might not always be able to find an insect right away, but you'd be able to find evidence of the insect being there. Then you can come back and watch that plant and find out what's eating it. To find out more about the insect zoo, go to mnh.si.edu. Discover all kinds of butterflies at butterflies.si.edu. And to learn about more animals, visit kids.gov.